The number one guy in the business is not a businessman. It's a philosopher of life. Pajanan, 2014, you were called to serve the country as minister. What was your biggest challenge uh, when you started this new journey as a minister? So, the purpose of life should be prioritized. I believe Silicon Valley was originally uh, built by prioritizing the purpose of life in better shape rather than making tons of money. Hi, Pa Jonan. Welcome to Indosat. How do you like our new marvelous experience center? Well, thank you, Mr. Sinha. It's a, it's a new experience for me as an Indonesian who have seen Indosat since more than 30 years ago. I think, well, if you ask me how do I like, I think it's a, it's a, it's a leapfrog for, for Indosat. So after experiencing in the business for more than 30 years, in, or at least in the past 30 years. So I hope that uh, this idea or this initiative will, as you said, uh, with the spirit of Kotong Royong, so it will enhance the development of the whole public in Indonesia. Well, we all know your career journey is as just as marvelous. Thank you. Can you take us back to when you were first shifted from the private sector to working on a government state-owned enterprise? Why did you decide to take that huge step? Oh, well, thank you. So this is a very, uh, very interesting question. And uh, well, why I did take the a big step or a big move, it was merely because, uh, well, I was and still is, and well, I am still, and well, since I was young, I f always feel that I'm still indebted to the nation, to the public, to the nation and to the people who make uh, my life becoming better. So, this is my, my, my gesture to pay back to the society that has made me grow. This is, this is incredible. I must say that, Pak. So you shared with us about your first career shift as you joined the Indonesian Railway Company. What you first joined, Kai, what was the first thing you noticed and needed to change in order to make that company better? Thank you. My first understanding when I was assigned, so it was uh, almost 14 years ago, that the railways company at that time did not pay or understand the dynamic and the change of the demand or the expectation of the public as their customers. So my job, my, my only job in the railways is not to fix the bolts and nuts, but to change the mindset to my fellow railways men and women to be more customer oriented or customer focused rather than uh, product focus. In the past, well, well, I have, uh, I used to have uh, like uh, super engineers in the country. They can move the bridge easily. They can rebuild the tracks uh, in a very fast way, but that's not enough. What I think that the railways men and women should try and always try to understand the demand or the expectation of the public as their customers. So that's my job for almost six years. So I keep pushing them to focus all the works, all the improvement to be customer oriented rather than product oriented or process oriented. I know that uh, while in the government controlled uh, organization process is or has been very, very key or very sensitive, but process is process. So the customer doesn't want to know. 
whether the process is difficult or easy or complicated or not. At the end, what will benefit the customer is very important. Like what I see, what you've been launching today, right? This is, this is very powerful, Pajonan, and very refreshing. It, it gives me personally also a lot of confidence. This whole message of having customer-first orientation. I, I think I'm very curious, Pa, a large setup like Railway, Kai, culture, you know, where you have so much of internal resistance, external resistance, how do you transform that? Okay, thank you. Well, the railways uh, in Indonesia, well, not as big as China or India or Japan, but we, I think uh, the railways, uh, the railways has around 70,000 workers or 70,000 70, personnel and they serve uh, more than 500 million passengers a year and almost 80 million tons of freight. So, the resistance, well, I do understand. When I first joined, I divided my colleagues into three groups of people. One is the one who do not want to change anymore. So, people usually above 50, and they are near their retirement. Another one-third is people who get confused since they joined the, this organization. They want to grow, but nobody gives the opportunity. They want to make a leapfrog, nobody gives the approval, and so on and so forth. Another one, the, usually the young one, when I was there, so people who were below 30, who really, really wants to change the railways because they understand the future is, there, is, there, is theirs. It's not the future, is not people who are in the near uh, retirement. After six years, uh, after six years, out of the 100%, out of the people in three categories, what I feel, 95% change into very progressive one. I understand. I cannot change all. I, I leave, I left 5% of the people who never want to change. But it's okay. Their choice is we put aside doing traditional jobs or we offer them early retirement. So, well, I have to be responsible also to the public money that I, I use or that I manage. So that's, that, that's the thing. So during my time and during my cabinet time, I visited Pakistan, I visited India. Some of my counterparts in Pakistan and India always made joke, oh, if you retire from the government service in Indonesia, why not you help us to, to overhaul or to transform the railway services in, in India or in, in Pakistan? And so I said, well, why not? Right? So, Mr. Sinha uh, came to Indonesia, I think, uh, right before the pandemic. Am I correct? Yes, yes, Pajanan. So, you came, I think, in early 20. 19. Yes, January 2019. So, you haven't seen the, 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 the dark days of the railway services here, even in Jakarta. So, if you ask your Indonesian colleagues uh, who used to live in Jakarta more than 10 years or more than 15 years, they can recognize the difference. So, people in the past, uh, in the, even in the morning or in the evening, they're riding the, the train not sitting inside, but sitting on top of the train. Like what we have seen in many developing countries, but no more now. The reason I told my colleagues, never, never say that we cannot change the perception or the discipline of the public, but we have to discipline ourselves first. We need to make ourselves understandable to the public rather than we push the public to understand us better or stronger. No. So we understand them rather than they understand us. And we make our organization more disciplined. Without 
the improvement of the internals, we cannot change the resistance of the externals. In my experience, changing the resistance from the external is a lot easier compared to changing the mindset of the internals. So that's why I told to your colleague, uh, Pak Sukadia and Pak Dani, that their first 3,000 customers are internal. If they cannot succeed, I think it's very hard for them to succeed externally. Thank you, Pak. No, Pak Jonan, this is music to my ear, you know. Uh, the change starts from top and it starts internal. Yes. So, so it is so reassuring, Pa. We have, we have gone through one of the world's largest merger. And I keep telling, and after listening to you, it gives me more confidence that marvelous experience starts with employee experience, change starts internal. Such a powerful message. Pa Jonan, 2014, you were called to serve the country as minister. Again, you know, such a, such a beautiful move, transforming and working on a setup like railway and now getting into transport ministry. What was your biggest challenge uh, when you started this new journey as a minister? My biggest challenge is to, to manage my ego. That's my biggest one. <laughs> because serving uh, the public, serving the nation as a policymaker needs a very big heart and very big tolerance uh, to the very diverse uh, Indonesia. So if you ask me, I, I've been trying until today to put aside my ego. So try to understand uh, the aspiration from the public more than keep pushing my aspiration to the public. I always, well, I always say to myself and I always coach to my uh, fellow colleagues in the past who also became the head of Indosat in the past also, head of telecom. I said, the biggest enemy of the top leadership is not the problem, but is themselves. So to answer you honestly. <laughs> I, I got the answer, Pa, and it is a good reminder for all the leaders to leave the ego behind once right. you, you know, and I, right. I agree with you. It's a very powerful message for, for all of us. You know, uh, you, you work as a minister, you work as a private sector, working in transforming uh, something like railway. What is the difference between working as a minister or working or running as a CEO? Any, any unique difference uh, if you want to highlight, Pajonan? Yes. If you work as a CEO, you can take charge directly to the plan or to the program, or to the action. But if you become a minister, you have to rely on other people to execute what you have decided. So I, I believe Mr. Sinha has seen a lot in, in the US or in India or in, in the Western Europe. So the best policies, the best policies will mean nothing without two things. One is the good execution. Second one is the timing. And timing, I always believe, belongs to God. This is a very powerful message again, Pa Janan. You know, the best Thank of you. the best policy has no meaning and, and if not executed. And, and you know, I understand. So very important message. Thanks, thanks, Pa Janan. One thing makes me even more curious, Pa, you know, first moving from uh, enterprise to minister and then from transport, there is some linkage, but then getting into energy and mineral resources. How did this happen, Pa Jonan, and what was the trigger? It was the courage and the wisdom of uh, Mr. Joko Widodo as, the, as my as Indonesian president to assign me uh, into energy department. So, what he said that uh, he believed 
uh, I can add something to the energy sector. And if you ask me, so how could it happen? And well, I believe that uh, Mr. President also understand that. Uh, well, well, I got to know him quite some time, and he always said that uh, you always become a good execution person. Period. You transform the railways. You transform some uh, airplanes or, or aviation uh, system in Indonesia without any, without very small public resistance, which is which is very needed in the very in the in an open democratic platform like what we have here, which is very important. So no tricks, no gimmicks, no no manipulation, no whatsoever. So just as do it straightforward, but make the public accept acceptance uh, big or at least very high. So that's what he said. Very powerful. Pa. I'm getting goosebumps. Power of execution. That's true. Just do it and do it first time right with this kind of credibility. Pajonan, today, today we are here, uh, we spoke about the Indonesia opportunity, the world is watching, you know, especially after G20, you know, uh, the limelight is As on you Indonesia. Said. Yeah. What, what are the, some of the innovation opportunity, Pajonan, you see in the near future, which we can do it together in a, in a spirit of Gotong Reong? But Sinha, so, uh, well, I'm, today I'm impressed. Uh, to your speech and to the tour that you made for us. Two things. One is opening the opportunity widely to the very diverse public of Indonesia. What I mean is that uh, you will help or Indosat will help. As you said, 60 million SME, but that's not the point. My point is that you will help many Indonesians who at the moment do not have straightforward opportunity in growing their life. They will find this technology helpful to them. If When we saw the batik counter here, the, the person explained perfectly correct to cut the unnecessary middleman, to give the batik artists or to give the batik artisans better opportunity by approaching more directly to the customers like you and me. This is one. Second, because you embrace also the 5G, I think in Introducing uh, education in Indonesia. Well, we have uh, 17,000 islands. 800 plus are inhabited. If you need to set up huge infrastructure, physical infrastructure to cater and to improve the equal education from one end to another end, I think it will take more than 10 years or 20 years. But this one, you can use that. The third one, I think, the public health. I believe if you cooperate with the Ministry of Health, well, well, I'm not promoting, but this is my view, you can help also uh, the, the so-called online doctors to the whole Indonesian inhabitants with a lot, a lot, a lot cheaper costs and a lot more efficient. We cannot replace physical doctors, no. We cannot replace the doctors. But the way the Indonesian can have uh, medical services, the easiest one, the simplest one, the, gen gener the generic one, can use the technology at least. Like what you have seen the NHS in the UK have done. People, every people have their own, the so-called own personal doctors in every part of the UK. So, if you get sick, you got a coach, coach or you get fever, 
you call. Then they have telemedicine in front of you. It's easier and cheaper. Because you cannot comfort 280 million Indonesians by producing one, well, one more million doctors in 10 years. No, cannot. Uh, well, I don't think so. India did one, but India has done it for, like, uh, for the past 50 years, if I'm not mistaken. So those three are very important for embracing Indonesia for, as you said, so the, the, the power of word gotong royong was or is still amazing for me. So as I don't know where you pick the word, but uh, I think uh, it's, that's the soul. That's true. But I, I, I not only picked it up, I felt it at Desa. The real Gotong Rayong happened at villages, at that's Desa, right. you know. That's right. So just to summarize, Pa Jonan, getting the benefit of health, not only to top cities, but to 82,000 Desa's villages that's true. at a real time, whether it is in Papua or Kalimantan or that's somewhere true. else, Getting good education, you know, what is available in Jakarta, New York, should be available in every village. That's right. This is the power of technology. Far away in the mountain, Correct. up in the mountain. Correct. And the last thing is uh, the, the power of supporting Umka by cutting middlemen. Let them get the maximum value. These are three things which I picked up. Pajonan, my last question to you is very personal, you know. Uh, I know when, when, when I was talking to all my 3,000 plus employees and close to 8,000, 10,000 partner, I had a town hall. And when I said, I'll have you in my office, I can see the spark, not only people uh, who are more than 45 years, but also the youngsters. What is your message, Pa? What is your message for all the viewer, not only the Indosat employee, but all the 275 million, especially the youngster? What is your advice? A lot of them take you as a role model. Thank you, Pa. Well, uh, well, I'm honored to be the one of their role models. But uh, uh, to, to borrow your statement, when we walk around visiting the, the counters, that every person should do beyond economics. So the purpose of life should be prioritized. I believe Silicon Valley was originally uh, built by prioritizing the purpose of life in better shape rather than making tons of money, like what you said. Putting the purpose of life at the top. The money will follow. This is what I believe as well. So I believe that Indosat, when they deal, when, if they, you talk, this in, make this introduction, selling these ideas to your stakeholders, I believe in your mind, in your heart, you expect the customers, the stakeholders will benefit more than Indosat will. That's my message. Very, very powerful message again. The cause, the purpose has to be That's right. larger than life. Rest all will follow. So That's right. Thank you so much, uh, Pajanan. It, it is a real honor to host you here. Thank you very much. For likewise, your time. likewise. Thank you. So, Thank you. so I'm, I'm also surprised that uh, you have a uh, very deep understanding of... Uh, Managing a business is well. The number one guy in the business is not a businessman. It's a philosopher of life. Thank you, Pa. We learn from leaders like you, and and we really feel blessed that you know we get guidance from somebody like you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.